active class with the some model organic molecule and their stability. So now I'll, I'll start the <coughs> totomanism. Yes. Ma'am, when will you send the syllabus for mid seven and sir? Oh, I forget. Na, sorry. <laughs> na, so many things. That's why I mentioned. Na, just remind me. So the just you remind me about the recording. I send immediately. Just uh, see here. Um, who are see here? I think Orpon, na? No, ma'am. I'm Shreyas and Ankit. Okay, so just uh, send me one uh, reminder mail for the, send the syllabus. Otherwise, no, so much things are in new, as a new head, I have to tackle, still like, not have it yet. So that's why I forget sometimes. Over, man, actually, okay, uh, man. Uh, whatever in the coming meeting, I think that is the urgent. If you give this reminder in my, this mail, G suit email, I will send. Okay. Because everything okay, I will do this at night. So I'm checking the email and send this information. So just uh, give me a reminder. I have no problem. I will be happy to get this reminder. Okay. Okay. Okay, I'm sure. Mm -hmm. Okay. So it's uh, from the previous class continuations about the uh, organic moiety, the reason for the stability of a organic moiety in a different reason. Now we are talking about the two functional group. Suppose you have alcohol form uh -huh, and another was a keto form and they are in a equilibrium. So which will be more stable that actually is a known as a phenomena. This is known as a totomerism and if this totomerism phenomena happen to one moiety having one keto and one enol form unsaturated uh, alcohol form then it, they are totomer to each other or in this word two structural isomers they are isomers actually functional isomers are interconvertible and force dynamic equilibrium and the phenomena known as totomerism and each isomers are called totomer. Actually, this shows dynamic equilibrium in a particular solvent, polar solvent. If you change the solvent system, there will be, you can control uh, the isomer in one only. So it's solvent dependent equilibrium too, you can mention. Or in some simple way, dynamic equilibrium. So movement of both electrons and atom using resonance. Here, movement of electrons and atoms are resonance. So that's why it is not perfectly resonance phenomena. And ketoenol totomerism is very significant among other circuits. So whatever. So it is the example of acetone. Here is the uh, example, just very popular and first acetone from the organic moiety 3 carbon acetone. It will be actually is here, keto form is the 90, almost 100% and a very less amount is, trace amount is uh, the enol form. This is known as enol form. Alcohol group 1-1 one, one, uh, unsaturation. And here is a keto form, uh, sorry, here is a keto form in here, this one, but phenol. Phenol is the enol form. So phenol is uh, enol form because of its aromaticity and keto form is there is a less stable. So this is aliphatic and this is aromatic. Both can show totomerism. That is uh, I want to share. Next, what is the mechanism actually based catalyzed? There is a two type of uh, mechanism. I already mentioned this thing specially that dynamic equilibrium is solvent dependent. So if solvent is polar solvent dependent actually, if the polar solvent having some basic nature, base catalyzed, then what is the mechanism? Base abstract the proton. So there is an atom and electrons are uh, intergovernment changing uh, the position through resonance. So proton is abstracted and then oxygen is open using this uh, resonance actually. Okay, and we will get the 
in all form in equilibrium this is all are in uh, solvent that's why proton shifting this is coming from the solvent you can write down here solvent so the mechanism will be more clear acid catalyzed ketoenol tautomerism if the solvent actually having some acidic some proton then it will actually protonate the keto group okay keto group and subsequently the abstraction of proton and we will get the enol form so whatever the acid uh, catalyzed or basic catalyzed in polar uh, solvent we will get the tautomerism in both the mechanism okay so up to this for the general method and rest with the some critical example for the tautomerism we will go probably next uh, if uh, if possible if there is no meeting i definitely will take a practical class for complete this uh, session now suppose we have this uh, beta diketo and uh, diketo diketone beta diketone is in 1 2 3 the if this is uh, how you will mention alpha this is if one keto group this is alpha position this is beta position so this is beta diketone or you can say one three diketone so this is one moiety and this is is uh, enol moiety now tell me which one will be the more stable enol form or keto form हाइड्रोजेन बॉन्डिंग दैट इज इम्पोर्टेंट सो दिस इज सिक्स मेम्बर सैक्लिक form uh, cyclic uh, moiety is formed uh, due to the intramolecular hydrogen bonding of the enol form but two keto not for immediately form the alcohol group that is not possible according to the hybridization uh, process uh, hybridization so that's why one keto is converted to the enol mane enol form and other keto group forms the keto mane hydro intramolecular hydrogen bonding and gives a more discrete type of moiety and It's stable with respect to keto. So enol tautomer is stabilized by hydrogen bonding in six-member cyclic form. Another one we, we can now ask him when talking about the alpha. This one. Then what happened? Keto enol tautomer is in this one. Is, there is a no chance. Okay, keto in uh, form. And if this is a cyclic, it will happen actually. so this is again a uh, form in a intramolecular hydrogen bonding but this is a trans form this is a trans form there is a uh, there is a in, uh, hydrogen bonding is not possible that's why this form this is a cis alpha diketone but this is a cis diketone and this is a trans diketone so what is the difference both are aliphatic so what is the difference so uh, which is the cis form and this is actually rigid cis the six form because in a rigid cyclic moiety that's why it give some stable actually more stable in all form but it has no such this moiety actually this trans form of keto is actually the stable form so it is a very trace amount of enol is not stable it is not in uh, condition like this because of flexibility so that's why and also there is a Uh, what is this one the uh, red one the phenomena dipole ma'am dipole moment ma non polar molecule dipole it, moment it trans the molecule is so stable because dipole moment is uh, almost uh, uh, opposite to each other and they clear cut so overall dipole moment is zero that's why trans form is stable they have no tendency to go for the enol form so this is an example uh, this is trans cis is can produce the tautomerism but the trans trans not uh, possible actually because of this type of uh, dipole moment but example is different so conclusion is different 
now what is the conclusion opposite dipole moment reduce instability and keto form is stability here for this moiety so case to case is different and with explanation okay and enol tautomer stabilized by hydrogen bonding in five member cycle thank you so enol uh, tautomer stabilized by hydrogen bonding in five membered cyclic form okay so this type of question will come very simple simple explain why type and marks is 1.5 you have to draw in a proper presentation this one there is a not lots of structure you have to draw proper presentation and very little few words to say okay some uh, what is tautomerism or explain like this in all form tautomerism so this will you have to write down from explain why type question you have 6 to 8 marks uh 6 to 8 marks for uh this type of question for uh, i am talking about only mid semester preparation so mid semester you will uh, tensionlessly just follow the classes and go through okay because i, I think when I, my experience may told me actually always tell me that uh, you messed up the mid semester exam maybe you organic uh, chemistry is uh, okay but sometimes inorganic and physical you are not perform very well so overall mid semester marks is very less for chemistry and that reflects in your final sem marks so very carefully not for organic chemistry that is my responsibility i will give you full actually <laughs> course to understand and we will discuss but we uh, discuss same thing with the inorganic and physical otherwise if you lose some marks suppose you have 30 and you will get only uh, this marks 10 marks okay so you lose 20 marks in you have no way can get this 20 marks from anywhere so very carefully mid semester is very vital for the uh, good cgpa okay each time now difference in tautomerism both are looks like some resonance so now the next question what is the actually the basic things difference in uh, tautomerism and resonance tautomerism involves a sigma and pi bond and shift of atom is found structural isomerism so one sigma and pi bonds are involved resonance involves only pi bonds that is delocalization of electrons but not atom tautomerism involves change of hybridization of atoms and so thus change of shape of molecules suppose you have keto form so uh, c double bond o later on you will go to the coh so hybridization has been changed sp22 sp3 or uh, so that the change of shape molecule so molecular shape depend changes depending on their hybridization no change in hybridization or shape in resonance so uh, like uh, you have some example carbonate i already mentioned so carbonate three oxygen are in a same way okay so that only the pi electron are distributed equally and so bond order of each carbon and oxygen is 1.5 mane 1 point uh, something actually divided by 3 <coughs> tautomers are in dynamic equilibrium and have a physical reality physical reality so we can isolate keto form or enol form suppose uh, the alpha diketone the trans form that is only happen no enol form so physically we can collect so that is the uh, uh, for tautomerism resonance structure are imaginary you can uh, for carbonate moiety you can have one oxygen with the minus we can isolate like this all are equally distributed that is imaginary so up to this for the tautomerism okay uh, some uh, basic things uh, inductive uh, inductive effect then uh, go to the resonance and uh, little bit about the dipole moment and uh, we are talking about the tautomerism rest with the moiety to moiety discussion we will we will go in some uh, in it in before mid semester we will go through okay suppose why the guanidine is more basic than uh, simple urea or etc this type of comparison we will go 
during some interactive session so you can taking part uh, for on this one so now we will go to the next uh, part actually that is very important uh, part and new for us so i started little bit early <coughs> ultraviolet and visible spectroscopy so what is this mean ultraviolet visible spectroscopy have you any idea what is the meaning ma'am ma it is used to uh, identify the structure of molecules any other thing at a glance what do you see actually in the slide ma'am colorful things yes so actually ultra visible spectroscopy if you have some color you have some uv actually and you will get some idea so it has something uh, what type of bonds are there sometimes you can predict unsaturation so that is the so colorful things you can be seen uh, structurally but their nature can be identified or predict by this type of uh, spectroscopy spectroscopy are the measurement actually estimations or give an idea sometimes about the inside view of the structural features okay spectroscopy so here we using the ultraviolet right for this in, inside view of a particular moiety i am uh, talking about the only organic chemistry but same thing happen for inorganic moiety too so ultraviolet visible spectroscopy i am just showing the range actually so this is 800 to 400 nanometer is the red visible blue and 400 to 190 90 nanometer is the near uv and 190 to 100 is the vacuum uv and after that soft x ray and energy is the e is equal to hc by lambda so this range actually so mainly uv visible actually go through this all 800 to 100 but before we only concentrate on the 100 to 400 maximum or on beyond, before that we only talking about the 190 to 400 but actually these are so related sometimes we can't uh, mane particular is a totally instrumental based data so if your instrument have this capacity for scanning the moiety 200 this 100 to 800 or 200 up to 200 to 800 so that we can get the whole type of absorption mainly absorption type of bands uh, we can give an idea okay so uh, slowly to measure multiple bond and aromatic conjugations within the molecule what is the purpose to measure multiple bond it may be carbon carbon double bond it may be carbon oxygen double bond carbon sulfur double bond carbon nitrogen double bond whatever but multiple bond unsaturations bond and aromatic conjugations within the molecule okay suppose you have protein how can you measure in uv have you any idea protein in a spectroscopic analysis i think you can you have little bit idea if you are going through the biology in uh, your uh, 11 12 how detect protein mam using spectroscopy mm -hmm. uh mam then maybe do we find out the wavelength of the reflected light of those bonds Uh, what is the range actually or oh, range uh, any idea um is it got to do with <clears throat> i should be either the energy levels of the orbitals right no just one how you detect protein you have protein sample carbohydrate so how will detect okay, okay. protein sample in a two test you you run uv and there is mam mean i did the example i am taking the example you have the aromatic conjugation in a protein sample not in a carbohydrate sample okay so protein sample will give the absorbance band around 260 that is for the aromatic ring present in the amino acid 
okay and that is actually actually you can check by google most of the cases we even standardize the purification with this absorbent bands only depends on this absorbent bands in protein and for nucleic acid 2 it is 280 so we always get a 260 280 range for the protein and nucleic acid bands uh, with respect to carbohydrate carbohydrate is uv inactive there is no multiple bond otherwise if you have substitution from something actually otherwise it has no um, uv active I mean inactive okay like uh, glucose glucose in a hemiacetal form in a ring form they have no uh, pi bond so it is inactive so you can easily uh, separate uh, identify that is initially you can screening the sample even not only measure you can screening the sample what type of sample you have there is any multiple bond or not so next point on passing of electromagnetic radiation that is the instrumental part okay in uv visible regions through a unsaturated compound then what happen a portion of emr is absorbed by it and that reflects in the spectrum actually and the amount of absorption depends on the wavelength of emr the amount of absorption depends on the bonding features of the compound and the energy absorbed for the excitation from the lower to the higher orbital level that is electron excitement that is happen in the uv visible spectroscopy and expression is lambda this wavelength absorption we express this as lambda nanometer and maximum absorption in that one particular one position the most Uh, excitation uh, most uh, actually energetically compatible excitation lower energy level that is designated as lambda max okay maximum absorption happened at lambda max and that is you can say e is equal to hc by lambda so energy low lambda higher that's why lambda max is a inversely proportional okay clear this part is just some few yes, words that is very interesting and you um, you can go through the pavia book is uh, you can get uh, from library or it is a pdf is uh, available okay so you only follow this book very standard book very much there is a silver stain lot, lots of books are there but i am following this uh, pavia book for you not everything but mostly examples may be from the pavia book so you can go through this uh, pavia book i will i can also share i have also have this one if you want i can share now few uh, terminology that is imported for all spectroscopy so and especially uv spectroscopy these are very important for there is a lots of mathematical calculation etc we will see so slowly light there is a light go through there is a qubit so qubit means the sample should be in a solution or in a liquid form that's why we take the qubit otherwise we can put here the sample so there is a in solution or in liquid sample we need some uniformity but liquid sample all is too much need liquid liquid sample is uh, we will not go to the using this one because it's too much concentrated so that's why we actually use very small dilute solution why dilute solution so that each penetration of light for the particular bond suppose you have keto bond particular bond c double bond o is minutely done not done but done mane randomly with anyone okay so we take very dilute solution so that the amount of sample is less in solvent and we will get a very nice peak otherwise peaks are very noisy okay so that is the qubit length and going pass pass through and there is a some recorder so from here Um, ma'am what means noisy noisy means you will the peaks are like up down up down erakum this type of not a smooth peak there is a hum type of peak i will show there you will get some uh, sometimes you will not in the range of in a recorder can record 
so that's why and there is a another part two um, because particular suppose um, there is a molecules your or moist sample if they are too much concentrated even they are collided to each other i am not uh, see the if you have any question you can ask because i can now see the chat box okay hmm. in present okay ma'am okay so you directly talk to me now uh now transmit uh, transmittance what is transmittance i think you are familiar little bit in this form uh, view actually i will again repeat a monochromatic light what is monochromatic light single wavelength single wavelength single wavelength all are cut up okay so a monochromatic light transmitted through a solution so solution is uniformly so that we can make it very dilute okay with an incident uh, in uh, incident intensity i0 and a transmitted intensity i mane this one is incident uh, i0 and this is uh, this one is a i the transmittance t of the solution is defined as the ratio of the transmitted intensity i over the incident intensity i0 so t transmitted is the i by i0 so rest is transmitted okay as a percentage of transmission t that is actually we will always provide the data 100 into i by i0 absorbance absorbance a or we can say is optical density absorbance that is actually also we will predict gives uh, in a lambda max of the solution is related to the transmittance and incident and the transmitted intensities through the following uh, re relation so a is equal to log 10 this is actually directly go to some logarithm here deduction is not there so just uh, this one i0 by a uh, i0 by i and so uh, a is equal to minus log 10 t okay so this is something uh, relations actually absorbance and transmittance we will go when we will go for the mathematical calculation this formula will uh, will use now go to the next part next part from this actually uv spectroscopy the basic principle actually totally uh, depends on some basic observation that is beers lambert law okay these are observations but these observations are so repeatedly happen so now it becomes the law okay but this is some initially it was just observation and there is a lots of limitation because it is a observation there is a lots of limitations but still this is a very fundamental law for this spectroscopy this is spectral uh, analysis the absorbance is directly proportional to the concentration obviously absorbance depends on the mane multiple bond so number of multiple bond number that is the concentration is higher that depends on absorb that is totally related to the absorbance in another way now concentration in terms of c mole per liter how to actually this according to they fixed the even the unit of the solution of the sample used now so uh, solution is a particular role actually that's i want to say the solvent has particular role role and this solvent has no optical activity that is very important so inactive solvent we will use inactive solvent suppose you will use chloroform so no unsaturation it's perfect for this uh, study if you have any solvent that has some um, optical activity aromatic moiety that is not suitable for this type of study so solvent choosing is also sometimes sometimes if you have some simple organic molecule in chloroform is no problem but if you some complicated mol some, some you have, suppose you have some alkaloid so they are not maybe soluble in chloroform in a water or is okay if you purely water no problem if not then there is a lots of problem if choose a uh, particular solvent perfect solvent optically active initially if not then there is another strategy okay 
instrumental strategy there is no problem the absorbance is directly in other law uh, the absorbance is directly proportional to the length what is the length the length of the cubit or the solution the container having the solution of the light path that is the light path for traveling the uh, solution sample the width of the cubit so from these two law we can directly write down absorbance a directly proportional to c we already mentioned and a directly proportional to a thus a is equal to epsilon cl epsilon is a proportionality constant but there is a also meaningful role for the not only the proportionality constant but it also constant epsilon is called molar absorbity or molar extension coefficient and is a measure of the probability of the electronic transition okay is called molar absorbity or molar extension coefficient and is a measure of the probability of the electronic transition so there is a lots of transition state maybe so it can predict actually how much probability is there and actually the color intensity you can predict from the value of the epsilon color intensity deep red light red you can see the epsilon value is large so your probability is higher so the molecule is more deep in color intense color okay so this type of prediction we can uh, predict actually from epsilon value so epsilon is very important parameter from this lambert beers law for the prediction of the color intensity and also the molar uh, there is absor molar absorbity the strength of the absorption now next part the uh, another terminology a uh, few uh, definition chromophore what is chromophore chrome means color etc you already know so what is uh, chromophore actually in our chemistry language what is chromophore and used in chromatography yes chrome means color and used <coughs> you know chromophores is a any group which exhibit absorptions of electromagnetic radiation in a visible or ultra visible region okay that is absorption so what i mentioned here which exhibit absorption and what is the requirement for the absorbance multiple bond aromatic yes. unsaturation in other way unsaturation so a you can say in another words any group having unsaturation pi bond that can term as a chromophore and chromophore i just mentioned because in that way they can excite it the excited in the higher electrons are excitation is possible and absorption is possible and you can get the corresponding color during the emission and that is the chromophore actually okay so examples are ethylene acetylene carbonyls acids esters nitriles etc all i mean at least all have one pi electron we will see how they are energy level are differentiating because of the unsaturation increasing or decreasing we will see later on i have one uh, nicely presentation oxochrome what is oxochrome oxochrome is not mandatory to having pi electrons this pi unsaturation is a functional group that attach to the chromophore and intensify their color actually through the resonance phenomena okay through the resonance phenomena now i just go through the lines a group itself does not act as a chromophore but its attachment with a chromophore it trip the absorption absorption not adsorption sorry absorption towards longer wavelength along with an increase in the intensity of absorption example hydroxyl group it itself is not in uh, pi bond but when it 
is a present as a substituent it intensify the color same to nh2 group or etc i am trying to show phenol phenol has phenol phenol not phenol benzene benzene you know colorless something but little bit sometime yellow coloration because of the some pi pi rings are there but this is a dark yellow compound these two are dark yellow because there is a nh2 group which donate is electron through resonance it intensify itself nh2 has no pi electron but when it possible in resonance with this benzene ring it intensify its color okay and same for the hydroxyl group now they are known as the oxochrome of this moiety clear this question is frequently yes, what is oxochrome explain ma'am <coughs> hello ma'am i have a question can i ask ha <laughs> ha yes ma'am so back in 11th and 12th when we were doing experiments in organic chemistry hmm. we would notice that uh, many of the organic compounds that we were experimenting with start changing their colors hmm has the colors got to do with all this mm, color just uh, what we other reagent you use is yes, once we take a uh, let's say a certain in a test we have a transparent liquid after adding a reagent it reacts and turns uh, and it's the things are different in a solvent it also depending on the concent solvent concent uh, dilution of the solution or concentration of the solu uh, solute you can get different different color too and okay. what you had mentioned okay that is you add some reagent that may be form some different compound suppose you have um, aldehyde or keto group and you add there um, dnp what happen the hydrogen formed okay and it yes. precipitated down so it is a different compound their nature is different okay that is, different. That is uh, not with this one that is some reaction organic reaction from different compound but okay. here i am talking of the one compound why they have color and how okay. we measure their color intensity absorption etc okay there okay. okay that is the difference <coughs> <coughs> an increase in shifting wavelength the terminology first we clarify the ter terminology okay lots of terminologies are there and this terminology is not restricted for uv and this uh, only all different type of spectroscopic analysis depend uh, related to the electromagnetic radiation the terminology are same <coughs> okay an increase in shifting of wavelength for emr has been occurred sometimes that i am uh, want to say if you change the solvent polar to non polar non polar to polar or you add acid or base so there is a not any uh, new compound will form but uh, maybe keto to enol the in one dynamic equilibrium is there so overall you if you see an increase in shifting reflection of wavelength uh, for emr has been occurred okay that is known as rate shift wavelength shift and and decrease in shifting of wavelength for emr that is known as rate shift okay so this type of shift it will be clarify with example suppose uh, red shift means there is a if the moiety shifting towards the 800 so this is red coloration and this is blue coloration according to the fibrio so depending on this one actually the term is the red shift and blue shift okay suppose you have example ethylene okay there is a 171 lambda max absorption at 171 i will show the spectrum later on Uh, now it is extended conjugation two lambda uh, two pi conjugation different moiety but we will see the lambda mix is now shifting uh, 217 so there is a one moiety and there is a two moiety energy gap is actually lower down lambda is higher means energy is lower okay so that we can say there is a which shift red shift or blue shift Some red shift. Red shift. Due to the shift. presence of extended conjugation with respect to ethylene. That is the 
uh, we can use this type of terminology here. Okay, now it is the UV spectrum actually. So what is in uh, y axis absorbance? Okay, and there is a wavelength hmm. that is automatically coming from the you can see in a um, computer screen or you can print out whatever. That is actually y axis and x axis. So this is uh, wavelength. Now this is the seat actually, and we, you can see this one. Like if you go to the, I, I'm just, uh, this is some model actually, 100 to 800 scan. So only we can get a, suppose this is actually for concentrated solution. If you get a particular very dilute solution, then you will get a very surfic a particular lambda mix, not like a broad from this 500 to 100. This is for concentrated solution. But for a particular solution, like I'm take, telling about the ethylene, you will get a sharp peak at 171 lambda max. So you can identify this is ethylene. This is uh, acetylene. No. Okay. So this will, uh, this is the UV spectrum. And this the difference actually, and there is a broad actually, even from, if this is not sharp, still we can point out this part as a lambda max. Lots of transitions are there possible, but this particular only you can, lambda max is one for one compound, but one bond, per bond you have one non, but unsaturated uh, positions, you can get one lambda max. So one compound you have, uh, suppose uh, ketoenol, suppose you have get, uh, for keto you have get one, if the two keto group under the same in the environment, you will get one lambda max. But if the different environment, you will get the two lambda max for a keto group. Okay. Uh, I think uh, this is some different uh, terminology we have to discuss on antibody and bonding, etc. So next class uh, or next uh, if possible, because this is little bit lengthy part, we will take uh, in that case uh, the practical class. Okay. This is very Ma interesting. Ma'am, hmm. Ma will you please share this PDF? Yes, I will send. Don't worry. Whatever I have, I will share. Ma'am, also previous classes. Ma'am, ma ma please also send the class note of previous class. Okay, just remind me, okay? I have no problem. Every year I say, share this part, no problem. Only you have to remind me for this year, this because I am still not habituated. I am... <laughs> I am in a new assignment, no, so problem. Just remind me, I will send, no problem. And uh, okay, but this is, I, I, I have a request, this is not the, actually the um, cover, I, I can all, everything in my slides. So reading book is very much helpful. So go to the Pavia book, any book you can go, but I think Pavia, the, uh, the approach is initially good for you. There is a uh, other book like uh, um, Silverstein is little bit high, higher type. If you go to the principal example, you can discuss from any reference books, no problem. But initially, go, Pavia book is very, uh, Pavia spectroscopy book is very common, is available online, PDF is also available. You can go through this one. Okay, only the whatever I am saying, and we have not so much time to deep in the syllabus for UV. I'm just browsing my better, I can say. That's why you will thoroughly, with my class, you will also just read the book. You can, even, even the Google browser, you can use this one too, but understand this thing, okay? Excuse me, ma'am. Yes. Um, can you give your uh, phone number? I have phone number in my website always. <laughs> no, ma'am, uh, WhatsApp number actually. The same. I have only one number. Okay. I am one JV and I have only phone number. Only email is one. Everything is one. <laughs> Maybe I have G suit identity, Gmail identity, but I have one always. Okay. Yes, okay. 
Okay. Ma'am, I have a question. Uh, can I ask? Mm. Uh -huh. Ma'am, uh, you you said that for one particular molecule, we'll have one peak on the graph, right? Particular molecule, na? If molecule has bond functionality is different, they give the different different peak. Okay. So my question is. Suppose, uh, ha ha. Tell me. This my question is. Is it possible for different molecules to have the same wave, to have the same peak? Uh, probably not. Maybe this is aromatic peak. Suppose you have aromatic substitution. Hmm. Yes, ma'am. That is uh, more or less coming about the 260. So this part is fixed. We identify okay. the aromatic nature with this. So few features like you have uh, another uh, moiety in each two group. Sometimes uh, you have, but. In a molecule, particular molecule, maybe shifting is there, red shift or blue shift, depending on the resonance or etc. If okay. maybe there is a extended conjugation, maybe there is a oxochrome present. So there will be some change because of the resonance. Actually, you will not get all the time the same peak, same uh, spectra for a particular moiety is uh, pattern is fixed for a molecule. Suppose you have okay. dye molecule. I mean, example for a dye molecule, you have rose bengal, you have malachite. Uh, so they are different, different peak. You can go through the Google, you will see. Maybe sometimes is uh, one peak may be same because of the aromatic moiety, because of the some keto group are in the environment little bit same. But there, lots of difference will be two or three difference will be there. Okay, so that we identify the moiety. From there. Okay. Okay. So now I'll stop my uh, class here for today. And yes, ma'am. Okay, because yes, I have also the exam from twelve. I have to join. Okay. Bye. Thank you. Thank you.